Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on computer networks. Today's topic of discussion is on a network layer protocol called RARP, Reverse Address Resolution Protocol. Viewers who are watching this session are first informed to watch my previous session which is on address resolution protocol. There I have given the introduction for these kind of protocols. Now I will be explaining you about RARP in this session. So RARP stands for Reverse Address Resolution Protocol. Previous one, what is that you have learned? It is ARP. ARP is address resolution protocol and now in this session it is RARP the reverse task of what ARP was doing is done by RARP. ARP was trying to map what a logical address with a physical address that means it is trying to find out what is the physical address for this corresponding logical address. RARP will try to find out what is the corresponding logical address for this physical address right. So this is not known here. Now to carry out this particular operation, I have shown one diagram wherein you can get to know the clarity also how this particular op, uh, works. And one more thing you just see here, the node is not knowing its logical address. It is knowing its physical address. Suppose if this is a node, okay, one particular host and you have one more host. When it wants to communicate with another host, any other machine, definitely this node a should also know its logical address, should also know its physical address to communicate with what nodes in the other networks. Logical address is definitely needed because whenever a node wants to communicate outside the network, it needs logical address. Within its own network, it can manage just with physical address also. But suppose when a node doesn't know its own logical address, so what, what it will do, it will try to make use of the reverse address resolution protocol. Normally in every machine, this uh, logical address and the uh, corresponding physical address, that means this information is stored. But if the machine is a diskless machine, it is not storing this information. At that point of time, the node has to make use of this RARP protocol in order to get its own logical address. So here it is making use of a request here in the network and it wants to find out its own logical address. It is making use of RARP request. Look at the message. It is saying that my physical address is A46E A4578236. It is a MAC address. So it is saying this is my physical address. I am looking for my IP address. I am looking for my IP address. So the request is a what broadcast. Same like ARP also. ARP request is a broadcast. Here also RARP request is a broadcast. So that all the hosts that are connected in this network, they will receive the message. But who is having this information in the network? A server. Which server? RARP server. This server is maintaining the complete mapping of all the uh, complete mapping of logical addresses with the physical addresses of all the machines in the network. So this information is stored in the RARP server and the server is maintaining this information in a form of a table. It is having the complete mapping of all the hosts in the network, logical address of a and what is its corresponding physical address? Logical address of B, what is its corresponding physical address? Logical address of C, what is its corresponding physical address? Complete information is there in, it, in the table maintained by the RARP. So all these hosts which receive this, they are not going to reply to this request. Only the RARP server knows that this request has come to me. So I am the one that I need to reply to this particular request. So it sends a reply here. And in the reply, once again, we are using what RARP protocol. So we say it is a RARP reply and RARP reply is unicast. Unicast is what? One to one, not to all the other hosts. But RARP request is what? One to all. All the hosts that are there in the network will receive. Only the host that is the RARP server will reply. So here the reply will come. Your IP address is 141.14.56.21. So it is getting its uh, logical address now. So this way, this RARP protocol is used. It is, uh, once you know the functioning of ARP, it is easier for you to know the functioning of RARP also. And RARP packet format is shown here. I'll just show you the diagram. Look here, it is almost same than, I mean to say the number of fields and the field names are also same in RARP. And uh, it is a 32 bit here, completely the hardware type, it will be same here also. In ARP also we have seen. The value is 1 for the hardware type, the value is 0800 for the protocol type, even here it remains same. Hardware length, here we are using 48 bits, so it will be what hardware length will be what 6, because 6 bytes are needed to represent the physical address, 
4 bytes are needed to represent the logical address so we are writing the value as 4 now only difference from the ARP packet format to RARP packet format is with respect to two fields one is the operation because now it is a RARP operation RARP request value is 3 RARP request reply value is 4 then you will have the senders physical address the senders logical address but the sender is not knowing its logical address this is what it is it wants to know that's why i have written here it is not filled this field will not be having any values because it is not knowing it is not filling any values in this particular field then the receiver's hardware address and the receiver's protocol address one more thing here is see when i am saying that receiver that is a target machine here the receiver is rarp server when a particular machine doesn't know its own logical address so how is that it is knowing the logical address of the server to send that information so it is not knowing here so what exactly is happening is it is making use of a broadcast address so once a broadcast address is used all the machines that are connected in the network will be receiving that request so rarp server is the only one system that is responding to this though all other machines are receiving once it comes to know it will send the reply and further for further communication now the sender that means the host now it comes to know its logical address so in future whenever it wants to send a packet or message to any other host in any other network it can write its own logical address in the packet and uh, ip packet and it sends the message to the other so this is the uh, functioning of reverse address resolution protocol so hope you find this session useful if you find it useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care